Hello, I'm Joe Rimmelspach in the Department of Plant Pathology at Ohio State University. And today we're here at the Ohio Turfgrass Foundation Research and Education Facility at Ohio State. And we're going to look at several things. The first thing is we're going to talk about uh, lawns and sports turf areas, maybe uh, roughs and fairways, why there's variability in color and appearance of turf this time of year. We're going to talk a little bit about what kind of samples we're getting in the clinic and then also give you a little update or forecast of what you might see in the next week. This area here is uh, primarily Dr. John Street uses this site a lot. This is a sports turf area, so it's what we call high cut turf, even though it's not extremely long, but it's not mowed short like a green. It has different colors. You'll notice some areas like here, it's a darker green color. There's lighter green colors. There's some that have brown in it. There may even be some spots that where almost all the leaf tissue looks brown. You say, well, what's going on here? And this is very typical of what we're seeing on many sites now. Uh, the different coloration oftentimes has to do with different types of grass. Um, many of these dark areas here are perennial rye grass. They have a very dark green color. Many of the lighter areas are either Kentucky bluegrass, and in some cases in this area, they're Poa trivialis, which is, an, is rough stalk bluegrass. Some of this brown stemmy stuff we see here is basically it is ryegrass, a different type of ryegrass that has these seed stalks that are, are le being left here and has this brown stemmy appearance. Right now I'm getting a number of calls from lawn companies saying that turf quality does not look that good and I agree with them. Um, oftentimes we had like this year we had a, just a wonderful fast lush growing time for turf. Lawns are just brilliant green. You could hardly keep up with the mowing. Weather patterns shifted, and now we're in a period of it's kind of just many places have been drier, some heat, and we're getting this loss of color, stemminess, and turf quality in many cases is not really that great. Now the other thing I want to mention in these areas is uh, these patches of brown that are actually caused by disease. In this case here, I want to point out several factors. Again, there's some of these dark, dark green areas are uh, different types of perennial ryegrass. In this case, we even have a, some patches here of tall fescue. But these distinct brown areas that we have here is what I want to look at. And we're seeing this in many cases in lawns. Uh, a few weeks ago, you would have looked at these and it would have been very easy to diagnose. They're 100% red thread. And so it's affecting the leaves, the fungus, causing this kind of pinkish color to the leaf tissue. But now if you look at them, they seem more brown. And they look, if you look carefully, you can still find some strands of red thread. But if you look at the leaves, you'll see the classic symptoms of dollar spot. And we oftentimes see this in lawns where we have, um, we have turf that was basically um, uh, had red thread in it. But for some reason, it transitions to primarily dollar spot. And I don't know which comes first, quite honestly. But they're both there simultaneously. And uh, they aren't a serious problem that you might want to uh, address those in either with your fertility program or in extreme cases where you want a perfect lawn uh, preventative fungicides. The next thing I want to just mention is what we're getting in the clinic. Um, basically, golf-wise, we're not getting too many samples in. We're getting a few samples in. Uh, still questions about leaf spot on creeping bent grass. In a couple cases, basically, they're clean. The turf doesn't look very good, and I really wonder if there's not more of a a problem with just aggressive mowing, where we're getting some abrasion to the leaves and some damage that way. Uh, other samples that we're getting in basically are home lawns, with some leaf spot, just a whole variety of brown spots due to environmental factors and uh, maintenance fa factors, things of that nature. Still getting questions on the white, the white grass. We had had another case in the central Ohio area this week with that question. We're still investigating that, so we'll continue to work with that. As far as the outlook for this week, um, at least for much of Ohio, um, it looks like we're going to have highs, 80s, 70s, lows, 50s, 60s. Um, if we have adequate rainfall, and I know that's been quite variable, some people probably have too much rain, maybe some other spots are dry, um, that's going to drive diseases. Uh, diseases to keep in mind would be things like, uh, of course, continued leaf spot can be active, moving down to the uh, lower part of the stem into a melting out stage. Uh, dollar spot will be predominant on many areas. Um, uh, if you have golf greens that are mainly uh, poania and you're running wet, this, that would be a, a perfect scenario for some startup of some uh, anthracnose. Keep that in mind. 
And then we had at least one case this week, and Brian will post this or put this insert, the picture of Brown Patch. It's a kind of a classic picture. And this was a case on a golf tee. It was a new turf, very lush, and uh, almost ideal conditions for the disease. So if we stay warm and humid at night, and you have very succulent tissue, then you may have some brown patch starting too. So if you have questions, get a hold of us. Uh, you can always look at our website, uh, turfdisease.osu.edu, uh, and we'll be happy to work with you in any way possible.